Example 1.5. If HP borrows $1 million from a different source at 5% per year compound interest, compute the total amount due after three years. Compare the results of this and the previous example. Okay, so example 1.5 is very similar to 1.4. But we're going to be doing this with compound interest. So yes, HP borrows the $1 million, but we're going to tabulate this in terms of thousands for simplicity purposes. So in this case, $1 million will be equal to $1,000. Okay, so we're just scratching out three zeros. Okay, so same thing we have... Uh, well, the one million that was borrowed. We have the five percent per year. Okay, after three years. Okay, but in this case, it's going to be compound interest. Okay, now let me tell you something about compound interest in this particular example they do specify in writing that they want compound interest but compound interest is actually the interest that it is used in real life so it is the default interest so if you ever encounter a problem which is going to be from now on that doesn't specify whether uh, you should compute it based on simple or compound interest. You always go with compound interest. So I repeat, the compound is the default type of interest. You only compute simple interest whenever it is specified in the problem. If it doesn't say anything, then you go with compound. Okay, so let's write down again what we have. So same, we have the same principle. one thousand we have n periods three years and then we have the interest rate of five percent per year and I'm going to put it as a note here that yes, it is compound. But it won't say in other problems that it is going to be compound. So you just assume that it's compound. Kay. So if we go to the notes, okay, we're going to see that the difference here is that the compound interest is based not only on the principal, like the simple one, but you're going to add all of the accumulated interest. Okay. So for year one, okay, well, this is a formula that we're going to be using. But for year one, you're going to find out that it's the same as the simple. So you're going to get the same answer as uh, year one for the simple interest. Okay. And that's because in year one, you have not accumulated any interest yet. So it's like this is a zero. So you only have the principal times the interest rate. Sorry. But this only happens in year one. After year one, then everything changes. Okay, but let's take a look at that. So let me highlight that. Let's go back to the paint. So same thing, we have year zero, one, two, and three. Don't forget the year zero. They borrow the money in year zero. Year zero doesn't have any interest. They owe what they borrowed and no payment is needed yet until the end of the third year. Okay, so now we're ready for year one. No borrowing in year one. That's where we start with the interest. So now as a note here, I'm gonna put that for uh, compound interest. This should be calculated this right here over or on the amount owed okay so the amount owed will be changing year by year so therefore the interest in this case will also change year by year okay well let's do year one interest 
Okay, so we said that year one interest is a principal plus anything that was accumulated, but we don't have anything yet. So it's plus zero times the interest rate. So this will be 1,000 times the interest rate, which is 5%, 0 0.05, giving us $50. This is the same that we got on the simple interest. But this time we calculated it over the amount owed, which at the beginning is the same as the borrowed. So it's the principal right now. Now how much is owed on the second year? It's gonna be 1,000 what was owed last year, plus the 50 that was accumulated this year. So it's 1,050 and no payments yet. Then we go to year two, no borrowing. But the interest will now be calculated over the $1,050, not the 1000 So we need to calculate year two interest. So now we're gonna have the formula the way it's supposed to go. So it's going to be the principal plus, let me go back, the accumulated interest times the interest rate. Principal times accrued interest times the interest rate. Okay, so basically the principal plus the accrued interest is the amount owed. Okay, so we're gonna have 1,050 times 0 0.05. And you will now get 52.50. Okay, so now here, 52.50. And how much is owed now? It's going to be the 1,050 from last year plus 52.50. So now it's going to be 1,102.50. No payments yet. Last year, amount borrowed, nothing. So nothing is borrowed here. And the interest will now be calculated over, oops, over the 1,150. Okay, so we're gonna do year three interest. So it's basically uh, the amount owed or the principal plus any accrued interest, which is 50 plus 5250, okay, plus the interest rate. So now we're gonna do 1,102.50 times 0 0.05, okay? And this will give us a total of 55.13. Okay, so now we put it in the table, 55.13. So now we need to add this to what was owed last year. So the 1,102.50 plus 55.13. So now we're gonna have amount owed of 1,157.63. And it is the end of the third year. So this is when they must pay that same amount. So that would be the total at the end of the third year. Now, then again, in this case, well, let me add these three. Okay, so how much did they end up paying? So it's a 50 plus 52.50 plus 55.13.
So they ended up with 157 plus 63. Now, then again, if you want to know how much was owed after all three years, here we did it again year by year, but if you had 20 years and it's not feasible to do it year by year, then we also have a shortcut in our formula that gives us the total interest. Okay, so let me write this one down. Well, if we want to know the total after three years, let me write that part down. Total after three years. Okay, we're going to do the principal okay, times one plus the interest rate to the N, okay, which is going to be one thousand one plus zero point zero five to the third power okay. and this will give us one thousand one hundred and fifty seven point sixty three which is what we got at the end of year three or that's the amount that must be paid at the end of the third year now why did I only use this part the principal times one plus the interest rate to the n okay so if we look at the formula I only use this part okay to calculate the total after three years why is that okay that's because the formula so you have the total interest equals to this is uh, the entire formula it's a principal as listed on the slide 1 plus the interest rate times n periods minus the principal okay so this part right here it would be the end amount and this right here will be the original amount okay so if we go back to the formula at the very beginning this is how you compute the interest so the interest is the end amount minus your original amount and here we have these two parts so you have the end minus the original so that's why if I wanted to know the end I just do that part which is what I did here and if I just want to know the total interest the 157.63 uh, I would just do the end amount which is the 1100 and 57.63 minus the principal which is 1000 and this will give me 157.63 okay, so. so if we compare example 1.4 to 1.5 you are going to notice that on example 1.5 the interest or the total interest after three years is higher than the one computed with simple interest okay so this is because uh, the interest was being calculated on the amount owed so no payments were made in years one and two until the third year so that means that the more you owe or the more that you accumulate as an unpaid balance, okay, it's going to increase the interest that is being accumulated every year. Okay, so if any payments were made uh, in years one and two, then the interest would have been lower. Okay, so that's the interest that your bank 
uses so be careful with that now if it's the other way around of, let's say instead of borrowing money you are the lender then well you can use this on your favor and you will have more interest coming into you so your rate of return in this case from the other perspective will be higher here we have an illustration of compound interest affecting your unpaid balance so the more you owe here the more interest you're going to accumulate so in the end you end up owing even more